The moments just before a big fight can feel like an eternity. There's still nothing in sports quite like it. The energy, the apprehension, the fervor. Of course, real intensity only builds from real anticipation. Flames stoked tonight by a longing to see two of the greatest of their generation collide. Saul Canelo Alvarez has become nothing short of a boxing phenomenon. The movie star good looks, the bold red hair. A Mexican heartthrob with a track record of dispatching foes with brutal efficiency. Canelo's landed some just beautiful, vicious body punches tonight. There's a perfect straight right hand. What a performance by Canelo Alvarez. He's his boxing crazed country's best and brightest star. And with that standing, has emerged a clamoring to see him face the best. For years now, the middleweight division's most feared fighter has been Gennady Golovkin, who's risen from obscurity to the pinnacle of the sport. Your spectacles of exceptional technique and power. What we just saw was not ordinary, it was extraordinary. There it is! Asak Thunder, predator at work! Undefeated in the ring, he employs machine-like effectiveness, a propensity to dole out ruthless punishment, belied by an impish grin. You need show, you need amazing show, just call me. I'm staying here, I'm ready for everybody. The prospective matchup between these two superstars and an opportunity to crown a true middleweight champion long seemed destined to happen. But the wait continued for years. With each victory, the expectations intensified. Until finally... Golovkin, you are next, my friend. Tonight, for Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin, the anticipation is at last over. The road work is done. The training camps are finished. The build-up for their matchup at long last complete. All that's left is the fight, and to see what happens when these two greats collide in the ring. Canelo Triple G is finally here. We have a WBC title that's on the line here for this fight, so he has to uh, weigh a maximum of 176 pounds, which is 10% of his fighting weight or the maximum weight for the fight. He weighed 165, so he's in line, as he's always been for every fight, uh, to come in at the 58, 59 for the fight. 65. Perfect. Today, my perfect weight, you know, 165. I have one month, you know, this is nothing. I feel great, just, you know, smiling. Beautiful weather, beautiful day. I eat four times per day, and I feel very good. This is Gennady's favorite place. It's right around the corner from the gym. And he can eat whatever he wants. He watches what he eats, but doesn't really have to limit the amount that he eats because he just burns through everything. I mean, the amount of calories he burns through a day, he just uh, drops weight very quickly. He's one of the guys. You know, he's not the world champion, and everyone else is kind of at a different level. He just like likes to make everyone feels comfortable. All the other guys, the younger fighters that are up here as well, he always uh, interacts with them. So he's the, definitely the leader up here, but he kind of takes everyone under his wing. After hard work, right now just everybody understands. Just right now, just relax time, dinner time. I'm having ribs tonight, and I think that's what Gennady's having also. But uh, everything here on the menu is, is, is delicious. Ever since I met him, I mean, he's got one of the most warm personalities, real likable guy. I think that's why he's become so popular. He's the same guy that I met on the first day as he is now, where he's got, you know, so many titles and considered one of the best pound for pound fighters in the sport, one of the most marketable guys, you know, selling out arenas all over the world. It's just, uh, he's stayed very grounded. And I think that's what the fans appreciate, not only his excitement in the ring, but his personality, his character outside the ring. They've done the training today. They worked in the morning and in the evening. They worked very hard. So it's time to enjoy themselves for a little while and then uh, go back to work tomorrow. New toy? <laughs> New toy. Looks good. We used to paint him to the colors of whatever where he was going to wear that uh, particular fight. Uh, if he was going to wear blue, we'd paint him blue. If he was going to wear red, we'd paint him red. And So just do all kinds of designs on, on the shoe as per whatever outfit he was going to wear. Now we don't have to paint him no more. He's got his own shoe. Triple G. 
Jess here. Hello, good, yeah. Feel good. Kyle Brook, he is big star in UK. Every fight he win, and every fight easy for him. We're fighting an undefeated fighter who doesn't know how to lose, doesn't know how to get hurt. Can he take the power for the 12 rounds if it happens to go 12 rounds? Uh, I don't think so. That's the first round. Kel, he's a huge fighter. Just, I won't beat him. When was the last time you were in any trouble in a fight where you felt this isn't going well? <laughs> Long time. You spoke about um, be, being in the gym and when you first went to the gym in Kazakhstan. At what point did you kind of realize that you had this natural power, this kind of extreme power? Was it always there or was it come on in later years? How would you describe the level of, or the kind, the type of confidence that you have? for the middleweight championship of the world. First up to the scales, he comes to us from Sheffield, England. His record a perfect one, 36 fights, 36 victories. The special one, Cal, special Cal. Scales, ladies and gentlemen, his record also a perfect one. It stands at 35 fights, 35 victories, including 32 knockouts, 22 knockouts in a row up to this point. He comes with some Karaganda, Kazakhstan, and he is the undefeated middleweight champion of the world, Gennady. Gennady Onyich, the Lofin, a.k.a. Triple G! When you look at Cal Brook, what do you think how he is now? Strong, yeah, you're right. He looks strong, he looks good. I believe he looks good in the ring too. No, because ring, inside and outside is a big difference. Do you think that there's a possibility this fight can go 12 rounds or not? It's boxing, I don't know, it's just boxing. I mean, for 12 rounds, I'm not ready for street fight. Street fight? Yeah, like crazy fight, you know, like street fight. I think Canadians look forward to just like I am uh, to 20,000 screaming English fans and doing their their uh, song, singing in, in, in the stands.
think that they, they understand who Gennady is and they understand that they're going to get a, a spectacular show, whether it goes one round or ten rounds. Kell Brook is a great champion. Kell Brook is an undefeated champion, doesn't know how to lose. Uh, he's very he's very well liked here. So I think that at the beginning we may be maybe uh, the the underdog as far as the fans are concerned, uh, as far as the cheering part of it. But um, I think once the fight starts and they, and they see the good fight, they're going to appreciate whoever does the best. The advantages are that he is going to be faster. The disadvantages are that uh, Gennady is a natural middleweight. Uh, he fights a middleweight all the time. So uh, Kel's uh, idea should be to make sure that Gennady never gets close to him, that he boxes him, not necessarily on a, a running, but just boxes him to the point where he keeps Gennady off balance. What, 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 what? Gennady has some of the best boxing skills I've ever seen in terms of cutting off the ring. He's got a lot of power, but uh, you know the, the saying is you can't hit what you can't see. So if Kell Brook is able to use his speed to his advantage, that, that's going to be the key to his success. But the trouble with their, their lies is that there's 12 rounds. Uh, he may be able to do that for a little while, but eventually he's going to have to slow down because naturally he's uh, naturally going to be getting a little tired. So once he does slow down, then then I think Gennady will have the advantage. Gennady, who do you want to fight next? My goal is all the belts in the middle division. Just say I want a unification fight. I need my last belt. He just doesn't have the personality of a fighter. This is serious business. Yeah.
I've been out to dinner with him and his wife. I've been in the company of him and his son. And you figure, this guy can't be a fighter. He must be a, a host for a TV kid show on Saturday morning with that happy-go-lucky attitude. When the human mind is challenged, it responds in evocative ways. And the greater the test, and the more startling the contingencies, the more crucial those responses will be. Which means for a fighter, the strength you don't necessarily see at first glance can end up defining the result just as forcefully as anything else. It's only me and him. If you bust me, if you hit me, that's the name of the game. Whatever he brings to the table, I know I'm gonna overcome. This is boxing. He's not scared. He knows his job. He knows it is possible for him. There are two men whose mentalities have propelled them to this peak. From deep in the bowels of obscurity, from the very brink of death, each deciding that they had no use for extraordinarily low odds, each resolving that fate was theirs alone to determine. I understand the task at hand. In order to be number one, you got to beat number one. I know I can do it. Here we go! This is the biggest chance for us, the biggest fight for us. Who's better? On March 18th at Madison Square Garden in New York, Gennady Golovkin and Daniel Jacobs come together in the boxing ring. As ever, their confrontation will be one of not just body and soul, but mind. As ever, their challenge will be to harness each piece together and still be standing at the very end. They say he's the most feared man in boxing. Shit, I don't fear him. They come this far to quit. Are you ready for this? Did you train your whole life for this? I say hell yeah. <laughs> I want to win. Winning is any boxer's most fundamental goal. But the man they call Triple G has long triumphed with emphatic flair. For nearly a decade, in fact, every one of his fights ended on his terms in the form of 23 consecutive knockouts. This past March, Golovkin looked to continue his knockout streak against Daniel Jacobs at Madison Square Garden in New York. My expectations, you know, this is a regular fight for me. Yeah, Jacobs, he's a very good fighter. He's a good boxer. I think he's number two in the middle of the division. The expectations for me as a coach were that Jacobs was a heck of a lot better than people were giving him credit for. So I expected a, a rough fight. Daniel Jacobs seems to be the biggest obstacle yet between Gennady Golovkin and the superstardom he's seen to be destined for since he showed up in the United States four and a half years ago. Golovkin looking, looking, wary of Jacobs. All it takes is one shot from Triple G. Hard right hand by Golovkin, down goes Jacobs. That early knockdown fulfilled the expectations of many ringside observers. But as the fight progressed, the boxing world found itself watching something unfamiliar. Gennady Golovkin in a competitive fight. Jacob's firing back, giving a good account of himself and coming back from the knockdown. If you land the uppercut, let's get a little face going with the uppercut and then land something. But bring it all the way back because he's countering, all right? All right. The threat of Jacob's power is keeping Triple G just honest enough. Right hook by Jacobs, left hook by Jacobs. And Jacobs, no, he's not an easy fight for me. Daniel fought a smart fight, uh, a bigger guy that was moving a lot, and he still had the durability to withstand the onslaught from Gennady. Oh, good up, cut back to the Golovkin digs in and tries to land some power shots. Oh, they go up back and forth. Tremendous fight. For the first time in Triple G's professional career, the final bell sounded, and the outcome is in doubt. I'm not nervous because I know I win this fight. Okay, maybe I give him a couple rounds, maybe three, three rounds. That's it. Triple G! Gennady Golovkin escapes, but faced the biggest scare of his career against Daniel Jacobs. And everybody said, oh, if you not destroy him, you know, you lost. Hey, come on. Not this boxing, you know, just it's my experience. It's a very good experience. I believe 
he's ready. He won this fight right now. I saw he his eyes today. You know, he's ready. He feel more <laughs> stability. We're really excited to be here. Um, this is really a tribute to the UK market, the UK fans, and just uh, the strength of boxing here in the UK to kick off this uh, press tour for this much anticipated fight here in the UK. Yeah. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop this time like the last time. You better get ready to race it until you do this. Show you what the truth is. I step on the field, it's time to get real. I'm feeling so ruthless. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Gennady, uh, what do you think uh, Canelo's strongest asset is? Canelo, what, what do you have to do to nullify Gennady's power? Question for Golovkin. Do you feel that he has enough power to trouble you at all? Canelo versus Golovkin features two of the most explosive heavy-handed fighters in any division in the sport today. This is really Gennady's dream fight um, and really the biggest fight in the, in the sport of boxing. This is a real throwback uh, fight in the middleweight division where you have two guys that come forward, very high ring IQs, tremendous fan bases. In their combined 88 fights, 67 have ended before the final bell. Hay peleas difíciles, hay peleas fuertes. Esta es una pelea fuerte. Eh, me voy a preparar al 100% como siempre, dar lo mejor de mí. Y el 16 de septiembre eh, estará la pelea que, que todos los aficionados del boxeo quieren ver. I'm very excited for this fight because everybody understands this is a huge fight and best fight. And it's this time, amazing time for both, for us, you know. La gente ha pedido esta pelea durante años, la tienen. Y eso es lo único que, que me mantiene motivado, ¿no? Esta pelea que, que la gente quería ver, que ahora está y que van a disfrutar de una gran pelea, una, una pelea de verdad. Right now, time for us is amazing. Everybody wants. I think everybody wants this fight. Thank you. Really top flight opponent would get in the ring with him. Jim, you and I and others in boxing identified Canelo Alvarez as the opponent who would eventually step in with Triple G because Canelo's been doing that with all comers since he was 15 years old. But two years ago, Triple G would have been a prohibitive favorite. Canelo was not truly yet a full-fledged middleweight and Triple G showed no signs of slowing. In the interim though, Triple G in his last couple fights has been touched up a bit. In particularly in his last fight with Danny Jacobs. Not only did Jacobs go the distance, but it was close for the first time in Triple G's professional career. Meantime, Canelo has developed into a full-fledged middleweight and seems to be entering his physical prime. The boxing world and press is essentially split down the middle in terms of who they think will win the fight, but everyone agrees we have a potential classic on our hands. And partially because it's a mouth-watering, seemingly can't this style. For Golovkin, this ring walk represents a walk toward what might be the culmination of a life's work. The man, the legend, the nickname, Triple G. Canelo Alvarez, always in these situations, the portrait of Paul.
So they have come from Guadalajara, Mexico, and Paragon to Kazakhstan to the absolute summit of boxing. And we're going over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you to keep this fight clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck. Touch of my brother, Swate. Lumpkin stalking, but cautiously. No other fighter that we've ever seen has commanded this type of respect from Triple G in round one. Canelo wants Triple G to come at him so he can counter. Canelo looking good early in this fight. Triple G is trying to fight his fight, but Canelo is the one who's actually fighting his fight right now. This is the fourth, okay? okay. Deep breath. He gave that one away. Jim, I got a two rounds to one. 29, 28, Canelo Alvarez. Use it, use it again, use it. Look, it's much more comfortable now. Stepping inside and throwing power punches. Let's dance, you know. Gennady Golovkin appears to have finally arrived in the building. Right hand lands for Canelo. Triple G walks right through. Puts it back against the ropes and lands a big right hand. What? Canelo shakes his head. The fight has broken out. The crowd is fucked. Oh, good shot. When your opponent walks through shots like that, what can you do? He steps back in and lands a hard right uppercut and a right cross. And suddenly, Golovkin may have Canelo in a tiny bit of trouble. Canelo trying to fight his way out of it. Triple G trapping Canelo against the ropes and attacking, attacking. Predator at work. Ninth round was a big one for Triple G. Son los de toda la vida estos, mijo. Son tres. Haz los perfectos, mijo. Velocidad, mueve, haz defensa, páralo con su izquierda y no abuses de quedarte en las cuerdas. Let's see how Harold Letterman has it through nine. Harold? Okay, Jim, thank you. Seven rounds to two. Get out of Golovkin. Meantime, so far, good Canelo's let Triple G have it in this round. Oh, this is a huge start to the tenth round for Canelo Alvarez. Canelo throwing and throwing. It's rocking soccer robots right now. Yes, sir. Now a fight has broken out for sure. And for the moment, Canelo's fire goes out as now Golovkin is back in the aggressive position. Gets Canelo on the ropes one more time. Now it's Golovkin with momentum. Right hand by Canelo. What a chin Triple G has shown. Another right hand by Canelo. He doesn't care nothing about those right hands. Mijo, él no tiene otra opción más que salir como perro. Three minutes, all three minutes, okay? Don't let him rest. Canelo has come out as the aggressor in the club, and he lands a big right hand that may momentarily have bothered Golovkin. And Golovkin lands a right hand, and that backs Canelo off. Just throwing knockout punches now. Fire and fury in Las Vegas. Could these moments decide the fight? Out on its feet. Hard right hand by Golovkin. And another one. Golovkin finished with a small rally. The crowd is going berserk. They love the action they saw. That was a brilliant rally in the last three rounds by Canelo Alvarez. Was it enough? Adelaide Bird scores it 118 to 110 for Canelo. Dave Moretti scores it. 115, 113 for Triple G. And Don Trella scores it. 114, 114, a three-way split. This is officially a draw. Well, I think a draw is a highly acceptable result. 118, 110 for Canelo. No, that did not happen. That is fiction, unfortunately. Uh, but at the end of the day, a draw is a result that should be satisfying enough for boxing fans because it means we'll get to see it again.